Peter Pan to the Rescue by the Disney Book Group. One day, Peter Pan and his friends were playing Follow the Leader. As usual, Peter was the leader. Tinkerbell the Fairy, the Lost Boys and John, Michael and Wendy Darling were following him around Neverland. Before long, they came to a stream. Let's cross it the fun way, Peter suggested. He grabbed a rope, swung over the water, and landed on the other side. One by one, his friends followed until only John was left. Tally-ho, cried John as he leaped for the rope. He missed it and fell into the stream with a splash. As Michael was helping him out of the water, John grumbled, Why does Peter always have to be in charge? Just once I'd like to do things my way. When they rejoined the group, John decided he wanted to show Peter how brave and clever he was. A little further down the trail, he had an idea. By Jove, he cried, I've got it. Got what? asked Michael. John said, You'll see. He took Michael's hand and together they slipped off into the forest. John and Michael disguised themselves as pirates, hopped into a small boat, and began to row towards the pirate ship that was anchored at the harbor. But it wasn't just any ship. It was Captain Hook's. He and Peter Pan were sworn enemies. Where are we going? asked Michael. To spy on Captain Hook, John said excitingly. We'll take the information back to Peter. As the boys reached Captain Hook's ship, they heard a noise. Tick tock. What's that? asked Michael. Just then a pair of beady eyes poked up out of the water. It was the crocodile. Once he swallowed an alarm clock, and now he's always making a ticking sound. Be careful, John warned, but he didn't have to worry. Years ago, the crocodile had eaten Captain Hook's hand, and ever since, the pirate was the only person he had chased. John and Michael had climbed over the side of the ship when they heard footsteps. John spotted two mops and a bucket. He whispered to his brother, Pretend you're washing the deck. A moment later, Smee, the first mate, came around the corner. Ahoy, mateys, he called. Can't say that I remember you, but whoever you are, you're doing a fine job. When Smee was gone, John turned to Michael and said, Come on, we've got some spying to do. I'm going to look for Hook. He found a telescope and climbed up the rigging. Smee walked by again. Do you see anything, he asked. Uh, a storm, actually, John blurted out. I should tell the captain, Smee replied. He hurried off. John turned to Michael. This is perfect. He'll lead us right to Captain Hook. They followed Smee at a safe distance and saw him enter a cabin. Stand watch. I'll be right back, John whispered to his brother. When John peered through the porthole of the cabin, he saw Captain Hook. Unfortunately, the pirate also saw him. Unlike Smee, Hook could tell that John was not a real pirate. Spies, thundered Hook. Get them, Smee. We're doomed, Michael said. Not necessarily, said John. The first mate came scuttling out of the cabin. When we saw the boys, he said, Oh, it's you. Indeed it is, said John. We've been checking the safety of the captain's quarters, and I must say we're shocked. Why, spies could look through the porthole as easy as I did. Smee led the boys inside. What's the meaning of this, Captain Hook demanded. The first mate stammered, They, they said they were checking on your safety, sir, and I must say, they're hard workers. Just today I saw them swabbing the deck and standing lookout. The captain looked John straight in the eye. Yes, he agreed. I think they're doing a fine job. After all, with the attack only three days away, security is more important than ever. Attack, said John. Hook said yes on Peter Pan's hideout. He turned to his first mate. Release them, Smee. We've got work to do. As soon as the boys were outside, John whispered to Michael, We have to warn Peter. Quickly, they climbed over the side of the ship and began rowing towards the shore. Captain Hook laughed as he watched through his telescope. They'll lead us straight to Pan, he said. Smee straightened his glasses and looked at Hook. You mean, they're really spies? Of course, the pirate replies. They're some of Peter Pan's little friends. They don't know it, but they're working for us. A short time later, John and Michael reached the shore. My plan worked, John cried. Wait till Peter hears. Uh-oh, Michael said. I hear ticking, like a clock. Like a clock in a crocodile. Like a, a clock in a crocodile that follows Captain Hook. The boys looked at each other. Hook, they said. Run! They scrambled up a hill, with John leading the way. When he reached the top, he called, This way, Michael, but there was no answer. Michael? John asked, looking over his shoulder. Captain Hook was standing at the bottom of the hill. Beside him, two pirates had Michael in their clutches. Keep going, John, cried Michael. Don't stop. A few minutes later, John bursted into Peter's hideout. Come quick, he yelled. Peter, Wendy, and the others gathered around him. John told them what had happened to Michael and that Hook was planning an attack. Peter shook his head. If Hook knew where I lived, why would he have followed you? I think it was a trick. He knew Michael and I weren't pirates, asked John. 
I'm afraid so, Peter said. John groaned. I've made a terrible mess of things. Will you help? Sure. I've got a plan, Peter replied. Let's go. On the pirate ship, Smee tied Michael to a chair. While Hook tried to find out where the secret entrance to Pan's hideout was, just then they heard a girl's voice say, Captain Hook. It was Wendy. She was standing on the ship's plank. Watch the boy, Smee, Hook said. I'll be right back. As soon as Hook was gone, John looked into the porthole. Not you again, Smee exclaimed and chased after John. The lost boys hurried inside and untied Michael. Then they climbed down into a boat that was waiting below. When the boys were all safe, John opened his umbrella, leapt over the side of the ship, and floated down to join them. Then the lost boys cast off and head for shore. Meanwhile, on the ship's plank, Captain Hook reached out to grab Wendy. Suddenly, a green blur streaked through the air and scooped her up. It was Peter Pan. Blast you, Pan! Hook cried. He lunged forward and fell overboard, snagging the plank with his hook. Smee! Hook cried as the crocodile circled below. Later that evening, Peter and his friends sat at their hideout, talking about the rescue. When Michael and I met Captain Hook, how did he know we weren't pirates? asked John. Pirates don't usually carry umbrellas, Peter said, smiling. Everyone laughed. What an adventure they had. The end.